Hello friends, well this is my last presentation on mechanical properties of materials and uh, we'll start it from here th that I've drawn this stress strain curve that essentially is uh, gives a measure of how the stress strain curve of mild structural steel will be and basically from this curve we can see four regions number one OA region O2A it's we can define it by one region a to C1, we have another region, C1 to D1, another region, and D1 to E1, another region. So basically, there are four regions here. Now, what we'll try to do is that we'll try to take each region and try to elaborate it. Now, region 1. Region 1 is characterized by some kind of a linearity between stress and strain. In this region 1, stress is directly proportional to strain. And as such, there is certain linear behavior that the strain-strain curve follows. Right. So we have this region and this A point is basically called the proportional limit. Now how we can find the proportional limit? Now the proportional limit is that point after which the stress strain curve will no longer be linear or it will have some deviation from this linearity. Right. And to find the proportional limit, the International Congress for Testing Materials has taken an assumption that uh, if there is a permanent set of 0.001% that is permanent set of 0.001% then this point is called the proportional limit. So this is how we can find A. Now from A1 to C1, A to C1 the curve shows some kind of a very interesting pattern in the fact that it increases from A to B and it falls from B to B1 and B1 to C1 it, it, it remains constant. Right. Now from A to B basically what happens is that this whole region is characterized by some kind of a thing called the ill region. The ill stress or is a characteristic of a material that defines basically that uh, there is without further increase in stress, if there is an increase in strain, then we call that region the ill region. right? And we have this shape of the curve from A1 to C A to C1 defining the ill region. Now B is the point wherein there is the maximum value of stress right there's a maximum value of stress at b and after which it decreases to b1 and from b1 to c1 it generally remains constant so this behavior of the curve it happens because of the appearance of leudal line so what are this basically for example if i have some kind of a material like this say and material is suppose subjected to some kind of say tensile stresses tt right and this is my perpendicular plane uh, to, the, to the direction of the stress. Now what happens basically is that at B1, at, or sorry, at B, there is the appearance of leudal line. And that is basically that there are certain slip planes occurring at an angle of 45 degree with respect to this. So there is certain slip planes occurring at an angle of 45 degree. And these planes are basically the planes wherein we have the maximum value, we have the maximum value of shear stress. And this occurs at 45 degree to this perpendicular. Right. So this appearance of this slip planes or the leudal lines, basically what it does is that it, it uh, gives certain sort of a plastic stretching. Right. The body, uh, the material suddenly stretches. Right. And as such, what happens is that the tensile load machine which applies the tensile stress right it cannot give in that load right because the material suddenly stretches so obviously the load is decreased and as such from b to b1 we have a decrease in the load now from b1 to c1 this leudal lines basically spreads into the entire region of this material and as such from b1 to c1 without further interest in stress the body continues to take in strain that, that is the body continues to deform right so now we got to understand that what is the basic uh, principle of this thing right the basic principle of any material is like this that if there is a material like this then essentially this material is composed of two regions number one you have this boundary region this boundary region right and this boundary region is some sort of uh, elastic material and then you have this unshaded portion that is the grains. Now these grains are some sort of a plastic material. Right. So basically what happens is that 
The elastic material takes in stress and as such we have this elastic portion of the curve and at B what happens is that the elastic material completely fails. Right. So from B to C1 we have 